Okay, so thank you everybody for coming today. We really appreciate your support. So today we're doing growing and cooking common herbs. So um, let me make sure I can move ahead here, thanks. So um, the people with you today then, my name is Andrea Nikolai and I'm on the left. I'm the family and consumer sciences agent. So I'm a registered dietitian too. So I love um, food and nutrition and helping people eat better. And then, um, Anne, would you like to introduce yourself? She's our plant expert. Sure, I'm Anne Yasalanis. I'm the um, residential horticulture extension agent and master gardener volunteer coordinator with U of Ifus Extension Polk County and I'll teach the growing part. All right, so just if you haven't done Zoom before, um, you can kind of see some of you probably very familiar, some of you just learning, but if you need to, if you hover over the bottom of the page, the toolbar should show up if it's not there right now. And you can see this little dot, 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 probably far on the right. And that's where you can hit more and there should be um, a chat option. So then when you have questions for us, you can type them in the chat there. And maybe at the end, we can unmute ourselves and just ask open questions. But during the presentation, if you don't mind just doing them in the chat to help you remember if that helps you or just save them to the end. Um, and then I have a, we have a short evaluation. So this helps us figure out how we could teach this class better and kind of what you wanted to know more of and less of. So we really appreciate your feedback on that and I'll send that out as soon as I can. Um, so Anne, you wanna take it away? Yeah, do you want me to share my screen or do you wanna keep on this one? Um, how, you wanna share it? Maybe that would be good. Okay. Just a second. I can't see with my thing there. There we go. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, this morning we're going to talk about um, how to grow herbs, and I'll talk about some of the common herbs to grow, um, where to start an herb garden, a little bit about harvesting. And then Andrea will talk about those um, same herbs and how to use them in cooking and um, healthy eating. And again, I'll take the questions at the end um, on any of the, the herbs um, or growing um, part that you have. So just hold those to the end or you can type them in the chat too. All right, so I'm gonna quickly show you first two um, graphics. Um, and this was uh, a graphic that was done for spring herbs and the next one will be for fall herbs. And even though it's really hot out, we are gonna be planting and prepping for fall and cool season gardening. Um, and if you look at this, this is the herbs you would plant in the spring. And I mentioned we're starting for fall and these are the fall herbs. And if you glance at it really quickly, it's about the same, except for the exception of, um, uh, our bulbing herbs like garlic and fennel because they take a number of months from planting to harvest and need a, a long span of time to be in the coolest months. So all that to say um, you can plant pretty much any herb any time um, except for these, these, these bulbing ones. Um, you can grow herbs in a variety of locations. So in the ground, in containers, raised beds, you can see the variety of locations in the picture here. Um, the main point would be to select a location that makes it easy and convenient for you to harvest and use them and be able to provide them with the sun, um, ease of watering and the soil requirements that they need. Um, they're really easy to grow in containers, raised beds, like I mentioned, even hydroponics will work. And it really kind of depends on which of the herbs you're gonna be growing because as you see in the pictures, top right is a rosemary and that's a really big plant um, compared with some of the smaller herbs like um, thyme that you'll see in one of the bottom pictures there. So space is really important and, and light just like um, any plant that you'd have in your landscape. 
there are many ways to start your herbs. And um, I'll mention as I go through the common herbs that we can grow here, um, if there's a better way to start those particular herbs. Um, so seeds obviously will work and you can purchase those um, uh, most any place. Now, just because they're offered at a garden center doesn't mean that they are the right ones to plant for our season. So you'll need to refer to you know, either those, those two infographics that I had earlier or some of our um, herb gardening fact sheets so that you do remember what to plant when. Um, but any of our annual and perennial herbs can be grown by seed. The perennial herbs, so annual would be an herb that would last one season. Um, and it can fluctuate a little bit on either side, really, because some, some definitely don't grow very long, but some other ones doing a couple particular things, you can get it to last a little bit longer. And our perennials would last multi multiple seasons, and you can start those by cuttings. And then there are some that you can divide. And so what that means is you have a large plant that you can split apart. So something like rosemary, that's a pretty big plant, you can just kind of split it apart to make new plants. And then if you have something like mint um, that would spread by runners, and so those are little kind of um, low growing um, offshoots of the plant. And if you kind of pull up a mint, you'll see there's tiny little roots on it. You can cut those and those can be rooted in water or stuck in soil, something like that. There are many ways to design an herb garden, and certainly if you're trying to figure out what to start with, a themed garden is certainly something that's pretty popular. Um, but the main thing would be to select maybe one of the herbs that we talk about today that you would like to try or that you already enjoy eating or that you have um, the right uh, soil, um, sunlight, and, and water to, to grow that herb. Many people enjoy growing herbs in containers, um, and that is very easy to do um, outside. If you are trying to grow containerized herbs inside, um, that can be a little bit trickier. They do have to have good sunlight if they are grown inside. Um, and I would always suggest that every once in a while you bring them outside um, to give them a good watering and to get more sunlight. Um, you can see in the picture here, there are some examples of some combinations in containers. Um, main thing to remember with your containers is that they have drainage holes. That's important for any plant container. Um, and then we're gonna use a container soil mix. So something well drained, but that has organic matter in it, um, just like we do with any of our vegetables. And the combinations that you see in the, the photo will kind of depend on um, the size of the container as well as the size of the plant. Now the, the top picture there with rosemary and, and chives in it um, and the, the basil, that could be a bit crowded just because rosemary gets very large. Um, so two to three per large container, but it is very easy to plant one um, per container as well and not have a problem with that. You certainly can plant herbs um, into your landscape. Many of them make really great ornamental plants as you'll see as we go through the the varieties that I'll talk about today. So consider anytime you can incorporating your edible plants right into your landscape. And you can see in the top left photo, uh, rosemary, and in the bottom right photo, they actually have, uh, this landscape has multiple herbs. This is chives here that is planted kind of as a ornamental grass in the landscape. All right, so now we're gonna go through a few of the common herbs that you can plant uh, in spring or fall here in Central Florida. First one we're gonna talk about is basil. Many people are really familiar with this one. It's a, it has a nice smell. There are many types um, and leaf colors that I'll show you here in a minute. Um, it makes a really nice potted plant. You can start the seeds uh, spring or fall and you can use the leaves fresh anytime. Here are a number of varieties that are available. So I mentioned the ornamental quality of um, a lot of these herb plants, and you can see here um, the varieties purple ruffles or the Siam queen. You know, these are really attractive um, plants. So in containers planted with flowering plants like maybe pentas or things like that would look really attractive in the landscape. This next one we're gonna talk about is dill. Um, it's a fairly um, erect, so tall, um, annual plant. 
can get about four feet tall and it has yellow flowers that develop into the seeds. Um, you can start seeds uh, November, December and into spring. Um, the fruiting tops you can see in this picture here. Um, they can use fresh or you can dry them. Certainly any of the plants that you would like to harvest the seeds from, you can let the flowers go to seed and collect the, the seeds from there. But remember that when you allow a plant to flower and go to seed that the quality of the, the, the plant will um, kind of uh, deteriorate a little bit. Um, so some of the uh, varieties here, the fern leaf um, is a nice one. Hera is one that has lots of foliage. Bouquet is the most widely grown one and you can see from the yellow flowers they're another um, really attractive plant. These herbs are nice to plant in containers with ornamental flowers as well because some of them have a really nice smell so they work uh, really nicely you know uh, front entries to, to a house if you want to have some sort of you know nice smell like rosemary or something like that as people uh, come to your front door. Next one here is parsley. Um, curly leaf is the most common grown, but there's also a flat leaf variety. Tastes very similar. Um, this is a cool season herb. Um, you can try and get it through the summer, but oftentimes it gets really hot and sunny. Um, so this does best in our cooler season. You can start from seed, container plants. You can see here there's a number of varieties available. You can see both the curly leaf and flat leaf variety in this photo. The flat leaf in this photo it's kind of yellow looking, it's not normally like that. Um, the Lisette is kind of a more compact, heat tolerant um, variety. Uh, these are usually smaller herbs, so these are great mixed in with containers where you want a few other herbs as well. So this with you know basil would work really well. All right, this next one is cilantro, oftentimes gets confused with the, the parsley. So if you looked back at the parsley, I'll quickly go back. See how the parsley has kind of a pointed tip to the leaf, although they kind of have those lobed leaves. If you look back forward at here at the cilantro, those leaves are rounded. So that's how you can tell the difference. Um, this is definitely a cool season herb, really tricky to get cilantro to grow here in the summer months. Um, but you can start this by seed or container. Um, the seed does have to be scarified. So that means you kind of have to rough up or scrape the seed, maybe with sandpaper or something like that before planting. So many people do decide to grow that one from containerized plant. Uh, rosemary is a, a great um, herb for our area. It is a perennial, it's evergreen, so always has these, these green leaves. It kind of gets woody as it gets older, so really kind of acts like a shrub in the landscape. It'll grow two to three feet tall and wide and has little pink flowers on it as well. So this is great. Uh, used in the landscape and you can see some examples here. Um, the prostrate variety is kind of a drapey low growing variety so does really well as a ground cover. Um, even just the old-fashioned rosemary makes a really nice small uh, shrub or hedge. Um, barbecue you can see that variety there is grown for that really straight upright stem so a lot of times people will use the um, the stems of the rosemary for like a skewer and you can um, remove all of those leaves along um, the the stem there and just leave it a little bit at the tip and um, that's why they bred barbecue to be a, a nice skewer but you can do that with the regular rosemary as well. This is oregano. Uh, two, two very common types that we use here Cuban oregano and that's the one with the really big leaf and Greek oregano. Um, you can grow them from seed or cuttings pretty easily. The Cuban oregano, as you can see, the top left picture in the bottom right, um, has a pretty big kind of thick um, succulent leaf and it is very different than the Greek oregano that has kind of a smaller, very um, fine leaf as well. But they do have um, uh, different tastes as well. The, the Cuban oregano and, uh, is very easy to grow, and the Greek oregano, I've had mine last multiple seasons, so I think that's one you can kind of keep going a little bit longer than some. This is mint. Um, it's really easy to grow, perennial herb, so that means you're going to get a couple seasons out of it at least. Um, this will spread and fill in an area, so containers, raised beds are often what people like to do instead of growing it straight into the ground because it will spread by runners. 
There are a lot of fun varieties of, um, of mint that you can purchase. So again, something like a pineapple mint with that nice variegation looks really pretty in a container or with flowering plants as well. Um, and just to have a variety of these mints could be a fun option for a container or something like that. Uh, this is tarragon. This is a perennial herb. I don't know what happened to the slide there. Um, kind of a narrow pointed leaf. So this is a nice one actually. I'll show in the next picture here uh, what the flowers look like. Um, but this is a nice one grown just as an ornamental plant. So it kind of has a clumping habit about a foot, two feet tall and wide. Um, and has a very similar leaf to rosemary, that kind of a smaller leaf there has a really nice taste. Um, but this one can be grown right in the ground, in a container, raised bed. This is thyme. This is another one. There's a lot of varieties of this. This is definitely another cool season herb. This is going to be a tough one to grow in the summertime. This can also get kind of woody like the rosemary. So it could be you know, used as a ground cover, something like that right in the landscape. These are usually really small plants, less than a foot tall, really small leaves. Um, they do like to be on the dry side, um, just like the rosemary. Um, so be real careful where you're planting those. There's some fun varieties as well. There's a, a bunch of these herbs where there are variegated varieties and it just makes like a very attractive addition to either an herb garden or, you know, container garden. Uh, planted in with other uh, ornamental plants as well. This is sage. This is about uh, two foot tall, um, a cool season herb. Uh, this could be, again, tricky to grow in hot summer, just, you know, too hot and sunny for this one. You could also try and put it in a little bit more shade. Um, you can start in using seeds or cuttings or containerized plants. Um, there's some really pretty varieties of, of the sage as well. So um, there's a tricolor. So it has that variegation, the white and the purple, which is real pretty. And then the golden sage kind of has a more yellowy look. But even the um, just old fashioned sage on the, the top left photo is really attractive because it's kind of a gray, kind of has the fuzzy leaf texture. So this is really nice um, combined with other um, herbs or plants in a container and it does stay pretty small so that's a good one to deal with, with as well. This is lemon balm. It looks very similar to a mint leaf um, but grows very differently. So the mint is going to grow very low to the ground and kind of spread where the, the lemon balm grows more upright, almost like a basil. It grows very similarly to that and while the leaves of the mint are kind of a a thicker leaf. This is a very, very thin leaf, but, but does um, have a very similar leaf shape. Um, so this is a, a good one you can use in cooking and substitute with, with mint as well. So you can start this from seed or cuttings or if you find containerized plants as well. There are some variegated varieties um, that are really attractive um, of this one. So um, the leaves are a little more pointed, but also again, this is going to be a more upright growing herb. When we talk about uh, harvesting herbs and using them, um, if you're going to harvest them for cooking, um, it's best that you harvest the foliage before the flower, before it goes to flower and before the flower heads um, open. If it looks like it's about to go to flower, you can cut any of the herbs we mentioned back. Um, so we want to either cut it back or pinch it back so it does not go to flower. If you want to collect seeds, um, you will need to let it go to flower. And again, I mentioned earlier that once it goes to flower and seeds, then the foliage usually will decline. If you want to keep eating that herb, you can always just plant a couple extra and have a few for um, you to eat, maybe a few to collect seeds from. And if it's something like parsley or something like that, you could have a few for your butterflies as well. <clears throat> Um, as far as um, harvesting and then um, curing or drying them, using them as well, you can see some information here. Um, all parts of the herbs we discussed today can be eaten. Uh, usually you want to harvest the, the younger leaves um, to use those. So, you know, don't um, hesitate on any of the herbs we mentioned to really cut them way back and use all of the leaves. And for the most part, even if 
um, it's getting late in the growing season, if you cut it way back, it'll probably come back a little bit more before we move into the next growing season. And usually that will help it last a little bit longer. Um, so, you know, never hesitate to cut these herbs back, you know, just a few inches from the ground so that you're using them. Cause that's the main thing you wanna, you know, keep using them um, and harvest those as needed. So there are a few you can dry in the sun. Um, it's probably best to dry them in an oven or dehydrator as well, um, just because of all of the humidity we have in the air here that can be really tricky even indoors to get um, the herbs to, to dry. And I'm sure Andrea has information on that. Same thing with the seeds. So if you're harvesting the seeds um, to use another growing season, those also need to um, be dry before you store them. Um, so make sure when you harvest the seeds that you're laying them out uh, somewhere where there's minimal humidity and allow those to completely dry before you package them away. Envelopes, um, jars, that, that sort of thing is fine, but you do want to make sure that they're completely dry um, so you can use them the next season. Okay, now I'm going to stop sharing and I'll hand this back to Andrea and she will talk about food preparation. All right, let's get us caught up here. <laughs> That's the one thing, Animal, going back and forth, right? Somebody wanted to see this again, so here's the herb chart. Um, just a quick preview again, and then the fall. Yep, yeah, we can send those out too. Okay, we're okay. Let me get through. Sorry, I'm making everybody dizzy here. All right. So here's that. All right, everyone can see it okay? Yeah, you got it. Yep, it's good. All right, so just um, today then, my part then will be the cooking with herbs and then hopefully we have time for some of your good questions. There are some in the chat box. So I'm excited to get to those. So just, we're gonna talk about storing and preparing a little bit what Ann did, but not talk, same thing. Um, cooking them and then freezing and drying them. So just quick review, right? So herbs as seasoning. So herbs, like sometimes you kind of like, you're like, what's the difference? Herbs and spices. So herbs are the leaves of the plant. And so they grow close to the ground in mild climates. And then the spices, they come um, more in the warm tropical climates and they're obtained from like the roots, the flowers, the fr fruits, the seeds and the bark, like for cinnamon, for example. And this, they have a stronger and more potent flavor. So they are used in smaller amounts. So that's that there. And just a um, quick thing here. Let me see here. Okay, so just one thing I kind of wanted to get across is that there's a lot of benefits for these herbs too. So you guys are all interested in how to grow them, which is awesome. And so I want you to use them. So that's my goal is just to remember that, you know, they're, somebody told me once they're like little salads themselves. So anytime you can include them in your foods, they're helping you with your health too. Um, so they add flavor, but they also help your health. And so it helps you in reducing sugar, fat, and salt, but just like we said, you know, they, even within themselves, it's kind of like eating a spinach or a kale, if you know those are very good for you. So these are the same things and sometimes even more potent than those. So just fun fact, I love telling this story, but it's true. Um, they had um, a lot of people, right? I think it was uh, 148 or so, um, and they consumed three different um, dishes, right? So there's meatloaf and then two side dishes. So they made them, one of them, one version, they made them all full of the fat, normal fat, like they usually do. And then the other one, they reduced the fat and tried to make them like a little bit healthier for you and less calories, I guess. And then the, another one, they reduced the fat and made them like the healthier versions. And then they added in the herbs and spices too, just they added in some extra. And they found that when they did blind taste tests with people, 
the people like the full fat versions, sugar, right? Um, full fat versions, the same as the ones with the herbs. So isn't that cool? You know, um, it's like what they can really do to just help us cut back where maybe we don't need so much. So if you want to reduce your salt, so there's a lot of people with high blood pressure and just it's good for everybody. These are some of the herbs that could help you kind of get that flavor in your meal without adding salt. So just kind of some key ones to take away. Garlic is a great one and think the garlic powder, not the salt and the same with celery seed. And also reducing sugar then, these are like the warming ones um, and they send, tend to give your taste buds that same sugary flavor. So if you're ever cutting back on sugar in like a baked good, which you usually can by at least a third without it being noticeable, but if you reduce it even further, you know, adding some of those in there can help you still love it, you know, just as much. And then I just wanted to say a quick thing about storage, right? So the fresh ones, you know, they can last quite a while and we'll talk about how best to store them. The frozen ones, you know, they're great. They keep forever or two, they're limp when they're thawed. So that's obviously the drawback for these guys. And then the dried, they actually never spoil, you know, like Ann was saying, if they're completely dry when you put them in there, they should last forever, just the, they'll lose flavor and aroma. So I don't know if any of you have McCormick spices, but just that's a note too, you know. Um, if you look on that McCormick spice, like if they don't have a Best Buy date, they're at least 16 years old. So you guys will have to check your McCormick spices. So. They should have a Best Buy date. They added that in 2004. Otherwise, they might have a lot less flavor. And except for the black pepper, um, if any of you guys have in those tins, we figured out McCormick spices in the rectangular tins, they're at least 27 years old. So if any of you have any, I actually have one. I think I'm using it for bay leaves. You know, it just you don't need bay leaves that much. So um, yeah, maybe someday it'll be valuable. And so you just wanna test the quality by crushing it in your hand for aroma then. That's how you kind of know if you are, you know, maybe due for some new spices. And so storing and washing then. So guess what? You know, if the herbs, when you're picking them or when you buy them, if they are dirty, they actually have found that washing them helps them last longer than you know, keeping them unwashed and then putting them in your fridge. So it's just that the if they have dirt on them, the once it starts to decay them faster. So they did an experiment with this. And so that's why, you know, usually we say to wash things right before you use them to keep them fresh. But just if they have dirt on them, I would say rinse them off then. And then think about um, what herb you're like working with. So there's the softer herbs. And so I always think of those as kind of you hold them in your hand by the stems and they kind of flop over. Um, they don't have the woody stems like that. And so those are great in the fridge, kind of like um, they store flowers uh, in like a, a flower shop. You just put them in a glass of water, kind of like I have pictured there, and you drape a plastic bag over them, but that'll help them prevent them from drying out, but also keep them fresh. Basil does not love the fridge. And if anybody, um, sometimes I'll pick a bunch of herbs and just put them in a plastic bag. And usually I pick a lot with the woody stems and they last fine for a long time. But if I had picked some basil and put it in there, it just, it's like brown the next day. It just doesn't love the fridge. So that would be one you could have a bouquet out of the basil. And then the hard, hard, hard ones with the more woody stems, those can just go in a damp paper towel then. Or just like, I guess I just throw them in my fridge. You could just set those in your fridge. So how to prepare them. So there's a lot of different ways. So I just, the bottom line, remember, I'm trying to get you to use them. So roughly chopping them, the chiffonade, the just having them sprigs, you know, there's a lot of ways like the sturdy ones, you can rub them, you know, kind of go backwards, right? Take your fingers and then go backwards. Um, how the rosemary grows and you can just take it all off that way. So um, running your fingers the opposite direction with the woody ones can help you quickly re uh, remove the leaves from those and save you time. So that can be really helpful. 
And the shift and odd then, that, that would be the narrow ribbon. So they do that in fancy restaurants, but it looks really good in a salad or just as a garnish. And you just want to stack five or six leaves and then you roll it up and then you cut it crosswise. And so one thing would be to just avoid cutting it um, more than like two or three times even and try to use a sharp knife. And so if you've ever used herbs and you find them like, you know how they kind of change the color of the cutting board, it's like you're losing the oils and all the goodness and the flavor into the cutting board. So that's why, you know, if you can use a sharp knife and then avoid like, you know, killing the flavor into the cutting board. <laughs> and you'll know when you're doing that, right? <laughs> so a guideline just in general is for dried herbs, you want to use one like teaspoon or something and then three times the amount of the fresh. Just the dried is way more concentrated. So think about it, you're drying it down. And so if your dried herb is really old, you know, maybe you're gonna need more than that, but otherwise that's about what the equivalent is. And you can always add more, which is the nice benefit. So the delicate ones that we're talking about, so these would be added at the end of the cooking. So it's like the ones, you know, how I was talking about the woody stems versus the soft stems. I think of these as the, you know, the soft ones. So Anne was saying, you know, too, you have to dry these quickly and away from the sun because they, um, and they also tend, you know, might not do as well with the heat. And so these are base, basil, chives, cilantro, dill leaves, mint, parsley, and just add them at the end of the cooking. Otherwise you'll lose the flavor, okay? So the less delicate ones, think the woodier stems, and those are the ones that you can just rub your um, hand like down, down the stem to remove the leaves. Those would be oregano, rosemary, sage, and thyme. And so those you can add earlier in the cooking process and they'll um, impart the flavor throughout. So sometimes I like to add like on roasted vegetables, like you have some, you know, potatoes and tomatoes maybe. You can just add on some thyme sprigs and they'll, you know, just impart that flavor throughout those roasted vegetables in that time. So popular fresh food, herbs and food combinations. So, um, Somebody was telling me, you know, they would like to have some fresh herbs, but they just want to be able to use them all. You know how we get cilantro, um, you need it for like one recipe and it uses maybe, you know, just a small part of that bouquet that you get. So I want you to be able to think about ways you can use the rest of that. So just complementing a side dish, like think rosemary, potatoes, things like that, cilantro, salsa, et cetera. And you can also use it as a main condiment. So pesto, you know, sometimes we think about that just with um, basil, but it can be used with any herb. You know, it doesn't have to be basil and it's usually with pine nuts and you don't have to use pine nuts, you could use a different nut. So that's really the main things that it consists of are a little bit of garlic, you know, a nut, and then the herb. So you just smash that up and then you can put that on, you know, you could do it on bread, you could put it with pasta, it's great on different meats and sandwiches instead of mayonnaise. So that would just be one way to get it. And then a seasoning or a rub. And another thing that's really popular right now, and I have it pictured on the bottom, is that chimchurri sauce. And so that is made usually with parsley. And so you can find it in the grocery store, but it um, may also have cilantro, oregano, but you can just substitute different things than the parsley and it is great like on drizzled on meats or on different grains or like on a salad. It's a tangy Argentinean sauce. So really good with flank steak if you like that or a marinade, things like that. That's kind of trendy right now. So adding then edible herbs to uh, like garnish dishes, right? So just think about it whenever you, whenever you're having that dinner, try to look through your spice cabinet or look through the ones that you have in your garden and see if you could maybe pick a couple of them to add. So here are some examples. So this is a lot of words, a little slide, but just to give an idea, you know, basil, just think in general, it works, um, bruschetta is great. It works well with tomatoes and cheese and like watermelon and cheese, okay? And also I have a coworker, Julie, I think she's actually watching, but she told me once she uses it, um, sometimes she runs out of spinach once, you know, for smoothies and she would just use it in place of that. So that'd be a good way to get some basil and basil 
has um, anti-inflammatory benefits. So if you have any pain, there's, a, there's one for you. So Greek and Italian dishes, and somebody asked, you know, do these, um, you know, do the different kind of oreganos taste different? And they do have a slightly different flavor. You know, they're, in general, I would say, you know, on pizza, tomato sauce, oregano is great, but also good with like chicken and beans and pesto. And you know, Cuban, it has like a little bit of a stronger flavor, but it's still excellent. And um, Italian, then that one would be um, a little more like marjoram, if you know that that has like a little bit of a sweeter flavor, but it's also good on those same things. And then like eggplant or grilled meat, so if you like the Italian one, um, yeah, just different. You'll have to try different varieties. You know, if you can get a few at the store to grow, that would be a great experiment. I would love to hear back what you think on the difference. Mint is the same. Like Ann was saying, there's a ton of different kinds and they taste different. There's, you know, <laughs> ones that taste like citrusy and like sweet. And then there's the ones that are the chocolate ones. That's the one I like, right? But mint goes well with fruit and dessert. So if you think of like mint chocolate chip or, you know, like mint, it can be great garnish on like a sorbet or something like that. So you have to do that for your spouse. And cilantro is also good for you. It helps prevent bacteria. So they found that like putting it in dishes helps actually act as like a preservative. So there's another reason to throw it in salsa and things like that. It's really good. You can make an avocado cream all you do is take an avocado, right? And they're getting ready for Florida avocados. And you put it with cilantro and lime juice. And that is delicious. It's like creamy and you can put it on a lot of different things. So garnishes can take many forms. Um, just remember, you know, um, when you're using them, it's okay to do different things. Also use the flowers can be really fun too. And here are some other ideas. So herbs, butters, and cream cheese, you could do that. And that is a great way to just test them. Um, you know, just trying to see which ones you like. If you don't really use herbs very much, you know, try adding a couple of them and just a little bit of butter or cream cheese and then tasting how that, how that tastes. Herbal vinegars, you can also do, just you wanna make sure to do them safely, but they're great to add to salad dressings, marinades, you know, things like that. And then the herbal oils, those are a little bit trickier. So I would say if you could go the vinegar route over the oil, but the oils, you know, you can use them and just, you know, do them really simply, infuse them and use them in the refrigerator just within two or three days. It's just that with those, um, they are all low acid. So whereas the vinegar has some acid, the oils don't. So we have botulism, uh, there's a lot of cases of that with the herbal oils, so just be careful. So freezing and drying. So Anne talked a little bit about this then. So we won't um, try to talk about the same things, but it works, you know, freezing them works great. It works best if you're popping them directly into cooked foods. Cilantro, I haven't had much luck freezing it and helping it retain the flavor, you know, and that's the same with dried with cilantro. I wish that one dried better too. Seems like that, it would be one if I could get it to grow year round would be great. But just putting an ice cube tray can be great. Just putting some water over it or extra virgin olive oil. You can just pop those in tomato sauces then or soups. And that'll give you some health benefits um, and just also help you use them. So drying them, just um, you know, rinse them quickly, right? Shake off the water and then leave in a well-ventilated area. And so, Sometimes I would think, you know, sun would be great, but you know, it can really deteriorate the flavor too. So um, especially with the delicate ones like basil, try to dry them like in a really like a ventilated area if you can, and then away from the sunlight. So that'll help keep it green, greener. And then once you're ready, you can just crisp, crisp them up and dry and crumble them, store them in different containers. And just the things that are bad for herbs would be the light, the heat, right? So if we can keep them in, you know, things that don't have, um, definitely not the heat, right? And just store them in that area like that. And away from the, yeah, away from the stove, which we often have. So cooking tips then, I skip one. So just wanted to say, you know, air drying them possible. 
microwave they actually found with studies then too i love looking at different things and experimenting how people did it better the best way so they've done different experiments with that but they found that the oven sometimes it doesn't go low enough because you want it almost around 100 degrees or even like less you know it's hard to get our oven to that temperature so just they found that even microwaving them for like 30 second intervals you know to stop and check that can actually work well dehydrator works well for um those both of those so it'd be good ideas so just trying to think then using what you have on hand make a rub right um and then under season you just try to you know experiment with the herbs first and then add salt at the end if you need to sometimes salt enhances the flavors so sometimes you need just a little bit but if you can really try with the other ones um they'll give you just a lot of benefits too and a fun tip you know i always wondered like when i go to the store or when you're going to the nursery you know which one should i buy you know the flat leaf parsley or should i get that curly leaf one so just um chefs actually prefer the flat leaf parsley for more flavor so if you're looking for the flavor wise a lot of chefs prefer that one and then the curly leaf one if you're looking for a garnish that's what they use so just um if you're trying to decide which one to get sometimes i go to the grocery store and i'm just you know i'm stuck then i stand there you don't know right so the idea would be to have fun you know in the garden in the kitchen and really use these um yeah so we have that evaluation then and then we're gonna and i know you have a bunch of questions at the beginning so let's see what we can get to okay does anybody have any questions type them in the chat box or you could probably feel 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 free to unmute yourself if you would like yeah i'll go back to the beginning and grab some andrea okay, and then if anybody has any go ahead yeah go ahead and type them or um raise your hand or you know, you can unmute yourself too. Um, questions on growing herbs, full sun for mo most herbs um, is best, yes. Um, some can do some partial shade and there are many herbs that you can grow um, to attract butterflies as well. So fennel, dill, parsley are just a few of them. I have a question about lavender. Lavender, okay. So I've tried growing it in the ground, I've tried growing it in pots, and it universally turns to paste after about a month. Is it just a Florida thing, or is there some trick that I'm not getting? It's a Florida thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really not the right climate to grow lavender. Um, it's just too humid. It, lavender prefers um, dry soils, dry air. Um, if you can grow it in a container, you could try it, you know, in the winter months when the humidity is down a little bit, but it's not going to be very long lived. Yeah. It's not you. <laughs> right. They'll still sell it at the store and you'll probably still buy it. <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, trouble growing rosemary. This is another one that um, likes dry soils, well-drained soils. So if you're having trouble growing rosemary, um, if you have irrigation, check it and make sure it's not getting too much water. Uh, make sure your soil is draining. If it's in a container, make sure this, the container is draining. Um, you can cut it back, but a lot of people grow rosemary pretty successfully without ever cutting it back. Um, if it's doing really poorly, you know, it doesn't hurt to cut it back and see what happens. Um, there's a question about, question about um, a planting guide with planting dates. Um, we do have that for vegetables. We don't have anything for herbs just because they tend to kind of melt into other seasons a little bit. Um, the best resources are just um, the spring and fall, which is warm season, cool season. Um, and again, most of the herbs you can grow year round. There are some that'll do better in the cool temperatures. And then some like the bulbing that we mentioned that um, need the cool weather. 
um, but we don't have a planting date guide for the herbs at this time. And do you know of any places that sell organic herb plants or at least could be trusted like without that, do you know? Um, I would try a local nursery um, and see what they have. Also, if they're a local nursery, you're looking for uh, sort of varieties of the herbs, whether it's plant or seed or just care, they would obviously know how they were cared from wherever they purchased them from, or if they grew them, they would know and they would know what kind of care they're, you know, putting into the herbs in their own nursery. So um, I would suggest somewhere local, you can ask you know, the questions about that. Um, and most of them, again, if you're looking for something specific or pretty good, um, for specific seeds, um, particularly for specific varieties, you'll probably have to look in a seed catalog. Um, Baker Creek seeds, um, Southern, um, can't remember the southern exposure maybe seeds and then um, Johnny's seeds you could try all of those um, you'll usually get a little bit more variety if you order your seeds online and um, a lot of those will the ones that have specific southern varieties you know there'll be more options for summer um, or if there's heat tolerant varieties or even looking for if you're looking for something different. I mean, this is a common herbs workshop and we do talk about uh, more unusual herbs at, at our um, unusual herbs and spices workshop. Um, <laughs> and those are more like, um, you know, Asian, South American grown plants and you can look for those because those are better for our climate. Um, so you can look um, in those types of catalogs too. I was going to say that there's, there is a really good local nursery. It's Maggie's Nursery out of I-13. And this is all they specialize in is herbs. And I mean, they give classes on how to make balms and herbs and you name it. It's really, really big. And that's all they do. And where is this? Maggie's. It's out of I-13. If you cross the Shane's Bridge, like you're headed towards St. Augustine. And okay, so North Florida. Follow it okay. and then turn right. There's a point where 16 goes to the left and 13 goes straight. Just keep going straight on 13 and it's about four miles on your left. They, they also are all down at the end of the bridge market all the time selling plants. So that's where I first met them. But they're very large. They have a very, and it's, it's kind of like going back to the 60s, Hippieville, <laughs> but it's really kind of cool. And I mean, they give all kinds of classes on stuff and they have a huge selection of plants. Yeah, that's, that's a good point too. Um, so we're in central Florida, but that doesn't mean anybody from anywhere can't join. But that's a good point to talk about like farmers markets and local markets like that. Those are good places to find, you know, people growing herb and selling herbs too. So, yeah. Um, wow. So somebody just asked to um, butterflies and caterpillars, the flat leaf parsley versus the curly. Um, I don't think it matters with them. We're good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if you're trying to or have attracted butterflies to your parsley, just keep an eye on it as you harvest it for yourself because the eggs will be really small and kind of yellow orange and you'll have to look at it before you cut it. And if you do tend to get a lot of butterflies, just, you know, most people just plant some extra parsley. And then somebody mentioned tarragon with fish is delicious. Yeah. And we, Stevia, Ann and I, I think we, I think we talk about that in a different presentation, the mm -hmm. more unusual ones, but that one, we have it actually grown in the office. You can plant Stevia. Um, it's amazing. It does taste sweet. It's just nuts. I love bringing it to classes. So, um, and then Ann talks about culantro, which can be a great one. So um, sometimes it grows better than cilantro. Mm -hmm. um, which Ann knows a lot about. I'm yeah, it looks very different. And that one can be harder to find. I know around here that people found it at farmer's markets and things, but it's, it's a lot different looking than cilantro. Um, someone mentioned Polk Training Center in Lake Alfred for herbs. That's another good one. Yeah, I didn't think about that. And we will send the slides of, I'll pull the, um, the fall and winter herb slides. And then um, we'll also, um, when we send the reminder for the uh, survey, 
we'll also send a link to uh, the herb gardening fact sheet and some other things like that as well. I can send some recipes, a couple of recipes, which would be mm -hmm. good too. If somebody asked about oven drying. I just wanted to say, you know, they almost recommend, you know, turn it to the lowest temperature for sure. It's not maybe even the best method um, just because they can't usually go that low and then leave the door open and then just watch them. And then when they crumble, that's when you're good to go. And somebody else mentioned using the kitchen sh scissors. That is excellent too. When you're trying to uh, do that chiffonade, when you're trying to just cut them down, that's great. What the kitchen shears could be used for would be awesome. And someone asked about a, a gardening guide. You want to plug our new gardening guide? Oh, yes. So we have a gardening guide. Um, I should start putting pictures of it in our um, in our presentation. So we have a gardening guide. It's an 82 page gardening guide on landscaping and edible gardening um, and tells you what to do each month. It's not a calendar, but it is a monthly guide. Um, and then uh, in addition to what to do in the landscape and edible garden, um, there's also pages for um, sketching and making some notes as far as, you know, garden successes and failures or, you know, things you want to do, observations. And so you can order those um, from our office. It's by mail only. We're not taking walk-ins at this time, but they're mail only and they're $20 each. Um, and we do have um, some information if you want to see what they look like um, on our blog. We have pictures of what they look like inside. It's full color. It's a nice, a nice handout, spiral bound. Thanks, Marsha. And then I just wanted to ask, um, somebody asked me, and the garlic, when would you say in Florida is the best time to, if you wanted to plant a bulb of that? Um, so garlic is a cool season, right? and it takes a while to, um, to harvest. So that's a late fall plant. Um, so October-ish, you could get that going. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the other so one I just- You can find starts in the, you can usually find starts in the garden center for that one. For um, the garlic? Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks. So the other one, you know, I think we talked about in other presentation and probably the uncommon the unusual herbs one, but just um, lemongrass. And I just, I have to say, I just did, you know, a big thing on using this, a cooking video actually with Julie on how to use it. But we, um, it has a lot of health benefits, that lemongrass, especially that bottom part. And I never really figured out what part you were supposed to use of that. You know, it took me a long time, but it's actually the bottom you know, like bottom three inches and it's when it gets a little bit bigger and it should actually, you know, you peel off those outer leaves and then inside there, it's kind of like something that's soft that you can actually cut. And, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, you can cut it in big chunks or you could cut it really small um, and then you could eat it. But a lot of times it actually comes out of the dish at the end more for like a flavoring and Thai foods, but you can also use the leaves for like tea. Um, but Anne, I don't know if you have anything you want to um, ask about lemongrass. There was a couple of people who asked about that or uh, mentioned about growing it. Yeah, the main thing to remember about lemongrass is how big it gets. So it's going to be six feet tall and wide. It is huge. <laughs> so make sure you're giving it enough space. And if you put it in a container, it needs to be a really big one. Um, Not for and, a window box. <laughs> no, no. And it here um, in central Florida, it, it will it can um, have frost and freeze damage. So it can brown out in the winter and you can just cut it back and it will come back again. It also, if you know somebody that has it, it divides pretty easily. And usually people that have it, it's so big, they're ready to divide it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Rhonda says it's taking over her world. Yes, they're big, yep, really big. <laughs> Let me see if there's any. Andrea, I'm the one that made the comment about, um, and I think it's what you were referring to with kitchen shears. Yeah. <clears throat> but, but my comment was about a neat discovery, and I don't know if you can see these, um, but they are scissors. Yeah. Trying to pick them up that are, are that have five blades, meant for oh. short paper, but they make a great tool to cut a chiffonade, and it's really fast because 
you just, you know, it cuts five strips. Or that four. is awesome. I am a Santa request. So, yeah, so a neat use for an office, for an office tool. <laughs> Just wanted to share that because I thought it was a great discovery. Thanks, Sue. I appreciate that. Thanks for sharing. You actually that. make scissors like that. I've seen them advertised um, on the internet to uh, use as a kitchen tool, but I found these in office supplies and they were inexpensive, but they work great. <laughs> That's great. I think we can take a couple more a questions, a uh, couple more questions, and then if we didn't get to them, it's hard to go through everything in the chat. If we didn't get to them, um, feel free to you can always email. email us directly, obviously, um, and we'll get them answered and we can go through some of these as well. And if they have particular plant questions, do you want them to send them to you or to the plant clinic? What would be best? Um, either one is fine. So our plant clinic might give you a quicker answer. <laughs> you want to if type you, that in the chat box? Yep. I'll, I'll send the um, contact information for our plant clinic. Then you can ask any gardening question too. So if it's not herb related. Um, and they're not open to walk-ins, but you can email or call anytime. Right. We have anything else right now? Thank you guys all for being here with us. We really appreciate it a lot. Oh, thanks for your support. And I'll end this if that sounds good with you. Yep, thank you so much, everybody. All right, bye you guys.